Welcome back to video two. We are on page two of your notes. Hopefully that can help you track a little bit. And we're talking about the equilibrium constant expression and how we set that up, often referenced as the law of mass action. Now, we're going to be using a capital K for our symbols for this. Very important. You must use a capital to distinguish it from the lowercase constant that we saw in our rate discussions. Now, there's going to be different subscripts by that K. Possibly. Sometimes you'll just see a general K, or sometimes you'll see somebody just write KEQ. Now, if there's a subscript, they have meaning for us, and you need to set it up that way. K in terms of molarity is called KC for concentration. In terms of partial pressures, we have KP, and we'll look at that relationship between those. A solubility product, and I think you'll understand that term solubility product a little better when we talk about that at the end of this chapter, is given the symbol KSP. For an acid, we have KA. For a base, we have KB. And there's actually another one, KW, that we'll see that is specific for water. And I've provided the chapters that they are covered because I see Zoomdahl as our reference book, not our driving force. So that gives you an indication of where we will be in our discussion in terms of the elusive little electron, our notes, and our textbook. Now, I want to show you how to set up that equilibrium expression and talk about a few pitfalls that we have. When we set it up, remember we have to use a capital K here. I'm going to do this first one in terms of KC. Now, when we do these, we only include aqueous states and gaseous states. We do not include solids nor liquids. Now, at a higher level, instead of concentration, you'll talk about activity and the activities of these are one, and that's one of the reasons we don't include them. As long as there is some solid present indicating that equilibrium has been established, we won't use the amount of solid in our calculations. So in this case, Kc is products. I'm going to use brackets to indicate molarity since it's a Kc, HCl. And we get to use the coefficient as our power, so that's squared. One of these days, kiddos, I am going to invest in a new tablet that doesn't jump around as much. So um, hopefully you can handle that. My handwriting's still better than some of the other teachers, I think. So we have H2 in the denominator because it's a reactant. Remember, reactants are our denominator. Products are our numerator. Common mistake is to flip that. The other common mistake is to multiply, excuse me, add here instead of multiply. So we have Cl2 each to the power of one, which we don't include. Wouldn't have bothered writing the symbol if there weren't at least one present, okay? Now, the next one I want to set up as a Kp, just to show you that distinction. Before you start, check off your states and make sure you're okay with that. So Kp in this case, Again, it's our products on top. So I'm going to put NO2. Oh, boy, I would have lost points on that. You would not get points if you were asked for a KP, and you did it in terms of KC, which I was about to do. It's a good teaching moment. And it's that partial pressure squared. You can use parentheses if you want here, but please don't use brackets. And then it's the partial pressure of O2. I know, to the one half, that is a little unique, but it's common when we are referencing our diatomics to balance that way. And we're going to put that over our partial pressure of our reactants, N2O5, and there's an implied one in front, so that's it. We're done with that one. Now let's do KC for this next one, primarily because we don't have any gases. Kind of silly to do a KP when there's no gases. So we have KC. Before we set this up, let's check our states. Ah, that's a solid. We're not going to include it. Do include aqueous. We do include aqueous. We do not include solids. As long as there is some solid there indicating equilibrium has been established, 
we don't include them in the KC. So now all we need are our products on top. I'm going to use brackets because it's a KC. It's copper, it's not copper solid, it's copper two plus. You cannot just blow off that charge, right? This is a net ionic, isn't it? We're ignoring the fact that there could have been, say, a nitrate hanging out in the, in the solution. Now, that's an implied one, so we leave that there. And then we've got Ag to its, with its charge, you have to include that to distinguish it from the solid, and then that would be squared to its power. Let's go on to the next one. Uh, we've got all gases, again, in this case. Uh, it doesn't matter what we set up. It, since it's not been specified, I'm going to go ahead and do a KC. We will find that there is a mathematical relationship between KC and KP, which will be very handy to use. So NH3 squared, uh, if the problem doesn't specify, you will have some freedom there. Uh, I'll tell you though, the problem will specify somehow. N2 is our reactant, so it goes in the denominator. And then I'm going to multiply it by H2. And since there's a balancing coefficient of 3 in front, I'm going to put that cubed. Now in the next one, let's check our states. We don't include solids. We do include water when it's a gas. Had it been water as a liquid, we would not include it. Don't include solids. We do include gases. Since this is all gases, I'll go ahead and set up another Kp for you. Remember, our products are in the numerator, so we'd have the partial pressure of O2. I'm okay if you'd use parentheses there. When you're doing WebAssign, you'll have to follow their formatting rules. Over the partial pressure of water, since it's water vapor, not water liquid, H2O, to its power, and that's a 2 in front, so that would be squared. It's kind of messy, sorry about that. Now let's take a look at this last one. We include gases, we don't include solids, we include gases. So Kc would equal, we've got to use brackets if we're talking concentration and molarity, so we'd have CO2. Man, it's jumpy today, folks, I'm sorry. Maybe I've had too much coffee. No, you can never have too much coffee, especially if it's conscious cup, right? So CO2 to the first over the concentration. Wow, you know what? Calcium carbonate is not a gas. I think that is a typo. That should be a solid. That's not going to be a gas. And so there's nothing in the denominator there. Didn't catch that typo, but I want to catch it now. I want you to see that there does not have to be a denominator when we're doing these. All there was was the carbon dioxide that could be allowed. So Kc is going to simply equal the molarity of our carbon dioxide. So make sure you make that correction in your notes. Let's take a look at this one. Again, we have a solid. We don't include it. We have aqueous ions, which we do. Now, you may recognize this as an insoluble salt. Phosphates are all insoluble unless they're with group 1 or ammonium. So this is technically a KSP, and we would include our strontium ion, 2 plus ion, to the third power, and we would include our phosphate ion. Don't forget charges like I almost did. We don't want to get these wrong. If you're asked for an expression, every detail counts squared. Now that's multiplied, and there's nothing in the denominator. Now if, if it makes you feel better to put the number one in the denominator, um, you can do that. I, I don't think it's needed and I won't be doing it. Now in this case we have a K. They are all aqueous and I don't know if you're seeing this but as we go from here to here it lost an H plus and that's what acids do. We'll deal mathematically with these in our next chapter but we can still set up a K for it. It would be our H plus to the first phosphate ion to the first power over our hydrogen phosphate ion. This is a hydrogen phosphate ion, not 
pure hydrogen phosphate or phosphoric acid would be a much better way to say that. So we'd have HPO4 minus. And what's lovely about these is they're always a one to one to one mole ratio. Very cool. Now, we have this next one. Sorry about that little typo there. Get rid of that. And I don't know if you're realizing it, but if you pay close attention to this reaction, water is donating an H+. Plus. So we really have a base reaction going here. We'll learn to recognize those a little better. I just wanted to set up one of each type for you. C6H5O2. Whoops, about to put my reactant on top. That's a big, 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 big no-no, right? Catch yourself, pay attention, double check what you're doing. Products go on top. So these are my products, are on top. HC6H5O2. Before you walk away, check and make sure that you multiplied and you didn't add and that your products are on top and not your reactants. Somehow put that into a little checklist. And then here would be my react reactant. Now, you may say, well, what's with the water? Why aren't I including water? Well, water is considered to be a pure liquid. It's the solvent in this case, and we don't include it in our case. So that's how we set up our K values. And let me just very quickly go on to a little bit more about these, uh, some uh, concepts involving K. Now, if K is greater than one, that means in a ratio of products over reactants, if this number is greater than one, that must mean that my numerator is bigger. And if my numerator is bigger, since my products are in the numerator, we would say that our products are favored in this case. Okay. Now, if we take a look at another one, if K is less than 1, that means our denominator is bigger. And if our denominator is bigger, that means, relatively speaking, we have more reactants overall than we have products. And we would call that reactant favored. Now, if we're comparing K values, right, as K increases, as the value of K increases, that means the amount of product is higher at equilibrium. So if I have two different reactions, the one with the greater K value will form the most product overall. Now, what this chart is showing you is that it's not the exact values of reactant and product that are constant. If you'll notice in each of these different scenarios where I've got, you know, initial volumes and or values and equilibrium values, the actual values are changing. It's not the values that are constant at equilibrium. It's the ratio as defined by the law of mass action that is constant. So it would be like saying that 3 sixth is the same as 1 half. Now the 3 and the 1 are different, sure, and the 6 and the 2 are different, but overall they represent 0 0.50. So that's much like what it's saying there in that. Now we're going to, in our next video, address some of the mathematical relationships between these. So until then, this is saying Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.